right, hey guys, welcome back to Teal House Farm. The big girls are just finishing up their school and I'm just getting ready to start dinner for the night. And I wanted to show you guys another meal from the uh, canning pantry slash farm pantry here and uh, how we use the items that we can or store long term in other formats uh, to make yummy, nutritious meals uh, that people enjoy eating. Um, I know when I started canning, I'd see all these things canned. I'd be like, well, that's really cool, but how would I even use that? And so my hope with doing one of these videos each week is to inspire you to preserve more um, and then show you how we actually can use these in real life to make good food for our families. So today we're going to be making a baked spaghetti squash dish with lots of stuff from our pantry. The first thing we need is spaghetti squash. I actually have one, two, three four of them for today. You do not need this many to do this recipe. I'm making a bulk size recipe, one, because there's eight of us to feed, and also I wanna have leftovers that I'm going to put in uh, leftover containers and stick in the freezer, and lunch size portions that can just be taken out and thrown in the microwave to warm up for a quick lunch for either Sam on the go or for myself if I don't feel like eating when I'm making the kids for lunch. So we're making extra. You probably could, if you are just cooking for two people, you could do this with one spaghetti squash. If you're a family of four or five, you're gonna want two and then you can kind of figure out your math from there. Um, these spaghetti squashes are from our garden and I grew them this summer. These were picked in probably August or September and this is the end of February and they are still in great shape. So. Spaghetti squashes, acorn squash, butternut squash will last long term in a cool, dark place. That's not your fridge. I'm talking about like a closet in your house. Um, we just have a whole bunch. I still have more left after this, but we're talking six months after harvest. We're still eating them. So this is a great product to grow yourself and to be enjoying um, all winter long and not having to do anything to put it up. We're going to get the spaghetti squash started because this takes the longest. We're going to cook them in the oven. I cook them whole. Um, this is something that you could do several days before and then have ready to go in the fridge if you don't wanna have to do this longer cooking time the night that you wanna eat. We're gonna just do it all today, but let's get these ready and then I'll show you what else we need. First up, let's wash the squash and then we're gonna put them all on a cookie sheet and pierce them with a knife so that we can make sure the steam can be released during cooking. We'll do 350 for 40 minutes, but after the first 20 minutes, we're going to go ahead and rotate them so they cook a little more evenly. Okay, so what else are we gonna add? Well, let's see. The obvious one is the sauce of your choice. We're gonna use red sauce today from our pantry, from our homegrown tomatoes. Um, you could also use um, a white sauce if you wanted to, or great for this recipe. So whatever sauce you prefer will work great. We got two quarts of that. We are going to add meat, and today we're gonna add our sausage from the canning pantry. Um, I'm just gonna do one, even though we're doubling this recipe, but meat is expensive, right? So I like to really, you guys know that, I spread meat out over as many meals as possible and fill up on other things like vegetables. So just one pint of sausage. And then we have two um, half pints of spinach. It's not the loveliest thing I've ever canned. This is my first time canning spinach and I did not, I don't feel like I packed it correctly. So this one I'm gonna learn how to do better before I make a video on how to do it. It was really tricky packing. Um, and if anybody has any tips on canning spinach, um, we pre-steamed it and then packed it in the jars, but it still felt like when it went through the canning process, it really shrunk down. But we're gonna add some spinach. We have some home canned onions. And we're going to add some mushrooms. I'm going to chop these up really small so the kids can't tell the difference between the mushrooms. And the <gasps> mm. Go. No, I disgust mushrooms. I don't like them. You won't even know they're in there. I don't care. I'm not. I'm going to... And the last thing is I'm going to blend up these two jars of home canned zucchini and add, I'm going to drain it, dump the zucchini in my pasta sauce and... Uh, blend them together to add extra veg, also to give more volume to the sauce. And also I feel like my home canned tomatoes sauce that I did this year, I didn't quite simmer it down enough. It's just a little bit watery. And this will help give it more substance and a, and a better, just a thicker sauce. Okay, so those are all the things. This is actually quite a lot of items from the canning pantry. You can leave out any number of these, depending on what you have. You could substitute my meat choice for another meat. There's a lot of variations, which is why I love spaghetti squash, because you can really get pretty creative with it, and it lasts so long in the pantry. We do need a couple things that aren't in the pantry to make this happen, namely cheeses. Um, so I'm going to be just adding some shredded a mozzarella and some of the Parmesan cheese to this, because um, the kids really like 
what they call shaky cheese. So, and that'll help give it more flavor, but you could obviously make this without adding any cheese if you're needing something dairy-free or just, I know cheese is more expensive. If you want to keeping it as frugal as possible, just skip the cheese. All right, so we're going to get our sauce ready and I'll show you how I do it. Let's make the sauce. So we're gonna open our zucchini jars and drain the liquid out. And then we're also going to open up our spaghetti sauce jars. And we're gonna dump all of that into a really big pot. We're gonna make our sauce, kind of mix it all up. Remember, all of these things are already all the way cooked, so we don't need to do a lot of boiling, which is nice. Everything's already cooked through. Dump our squash in with the sauce and then our drained mushrooms. And we're gonna hit it with the immersion blender so the kids don't know how many vegetables are actually in here. And again, since it's all cooked, I didn't have to heat it up to make them nice and soft. They're already nice and soft. It's a great looking sauce, nice and thick. Next step, we're going to dump in our onion pieces, drain those first as well. And we're gonna dump in our spinach, also gonna drain that first. I'm gonna use two jars of spinach because um, I like spinach in my spaghetti. And then we're gonna mix that all together and we'll open up our sausage. I dry pack the sausage so it doesn't need to be drained, just put in there. Again, it's fully cooked so we don't have to cook the sausage through. Our squash are done. We know they're done because we can poke a knife right through them nice and soft. While we are waiting for the spaghetti squash to cool down so we can shred it, just a couple minutes really, Ivy is gonna help me make these. So we don't usually have these, but I thought I would show you this because this is kind of a fun recipe. The kids are really gonna like it. Normally I make homemade bread. You guys know that if you've been around, um, but we actually got these for free the other day and I don't turn away free food. So we're gonna use them. We're gonna use two rolls of these um, Pillsbury breadsticks to make cheesy breadstick dippers that we'll dip in our home canned pizza sauce. Oh. Let's make them. <laughs> I got these from my class. At your homeschool co-op? Mm -hmm. Why does she have them? Did you guys use them for something? No. Or she just had them? The teacher she gave them. She just had them. They expired this month so that maybe she had a big case of them. So mm -hmm. we're gonna use them. First we need a buttered cookie dish and then we're going to open up the first package of breadsticks. Each package has 12 breadsticks in it. Um, we're doing double since there's so many of us. And we lay the two rectangles out flat and we're going to cover them with mozzarella cheese and some bacon. Some of the kids don't want bacon, so we made one just cheese and one with the bacon bit so people can choose what they want. And then we are gonna go ahead and open up the second container of breadsticks and lay those on top of our rectangles. I'm gonna melt some butter in the microwave. There's what it looks like now. It's kind of like a breadstick sandwich. We have our melted butter. We're going to add to that about two cloves of minced garlic and a good old dose of Parmesan cheese. We're gonna mix all that together and then we're gonna brush it on top of our breadsticks. This will give them a really nice golden brown cover. When you do brush it on, you wanna make sure you use all of the butter. I melted about three tablespoons worth of butter. It's a lot of butter, but we're gonna cover them nicely. These go in the oven on 350 for about 20 minutes. Our squash are done, but they're still really hot, so be careful here, cutting them in half. We're gonna need to scoop the seeds out, so they need to be cut in half. And then we're gonna open them all up, but do watch your fingers, because even if they don't feel very hot on the outside, they are super hot on the inside. I don't have a good technique for scooping out seeds. I think if I waited for them to cool down more, I could just do it with my fingers, but I kind of use a spoon and, and we get them out. And you want to get the really runny looking guts out too. And then we are going to use a knife to scrape out the spaghetti part of the squash. And we scrape right down to the skin. You want to get as much as you can into our big pot, mix it in with the sauce, and then dump it all into this oversized cake, into this oversized pan going to top it with some mozzarella cheese, spread that out nicely, and then that's gonna go in the oven on 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes. There it is, all done, they're looking great. We're gonna portion it out, put some Parmesan cheese on top for the little guys. Mommy barely sat down and Annie's already cleared her spaghetti squash off her plate. Were you hungry, Nanny? Is it good? I'm so hungry, I'm already digging in. Uh, Mommy, let me taste test it, okay? Okay, hey, go. Let me taste it, yummy. Yeah! Oh, you got cheese and squash everywhere, JJ. Do you like the bread, Goops? Why are you all going on? Good. This is how I do the leftovers. I got two that are just the spaghetti squash bake. 
and I got two that are half spaghetti squash break and I wrapped up a leftover breadstick in saran wrap. Just gonna throw them in the freezer like this and then Sam can grab whatever he wants for lunch to take to school. I've got all sorts of leftovers done like this. So it's just kind of like a grab and go individual portioned lunch for school. All right, there you have it. Simple dinner from the canning pantry again. Thanks for watching. That's right. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you all next time. Bye. Yeah.